Hello everyone, we're so excited today. As you can see behind me, we've got Planet Shakers all the way from Australia, and they're here with their senior pastor, Sam Evans, and she's got an awesome word in store for you. Peter had the love of God. You and I have the love of God. In Romans 8, 31, it says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself, who then will condemn us. No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honour at God's right hand pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. See, Peter understood he was loved. So no matter where he went, he had a gift of love to give away. He saw this man crippled. For 40 years, that man was placed beside that temple. For 40 years, men and women of God perhaps passed him every day, but there was one moment where someone stopped. And the revelation that I want us to understand is that he stopped because he possessed the love of God. God does not walk beside you and ignore your circumstances. He just doesn't walk by you and think, oh, well, never mind, have a good life. No, God's love for us is just so full of compassion and mercy and grace that when Peter saw the need, he had to stop and make an exchange. He had to give away the love of God. And God loves us so much. He doesn't want to keep us in our circumstances. He doesn't want to keep us in sickness. He doesn't want to keep us in trials. He is the overcomer. He is the all victorious one. And he wants to resurrect us out of our situation. He, Peter had the love of God. And that's what you have. You inside of you, you have the love of God. Nothing can separate you from this love. Peter understood that. What else did Peter have to give away? Peter had the authority that Jesus had given him. In Matthew 10, 1, it says, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. We have authority. We have authority over the enemy. We have authority over sickness. That's what Jesus did when he sent the disciples out two by two. He gave them authority to operate just like he operated. They went out from Jesus and they went everywhere doing all kinds of miracles. We see it in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit was poured out. We see suddenly there was an endowment of power and this power wasn't meant just to say, you know, a nice happy, happy time and enjoying the, the feelings of um, this power. It is a power to perform miracles and an authority that says to your situation and your circumstance, you're not going to stay that way. You're, you're not going to dictate terms to me. 
It's an authority that demands that 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 circumstance, that situation, that diagnosis, bow the knee to the authority of Jesus. And that's what Peter had. That's what you have. You know, many times we allow the circumstances of life just to roll on over us. We can sit back as Christians and allow thoughts of doubt and unbelief and worry and anxiety to really dominate us. We allow our circumstances to overwhelm us at times. You know, just recently, I don't know why, you know, it's taken me this long to realise these sorts of things. We had this storm that came through Melbourne and it was quite a violent storm in that many houses were damaged and all sorts of things you know, started to uh, affect the electricity and um, the traffic. You know, there was all trees over roads and it was a really quite a fierce storm. And I remember the storm coming through and so I was at home. Now, normally I would just go, oh, it's a storm. But God's really been dealing with my heart and saying, I've got authority Jesus calmed the winds and the waves. And so if I possess this authority, I can take my authority over the elements. And so I was at home at this time as this storm started to come. And so I stood in my lounge room and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command these winds to be still. Now, before I had started praying, I've got this sail out the back of my house, which is a, sa- uh, a shade sail out the back of my house. And this sail was billowing up and billowing down, and it's attached to these two poles. And what had happened was these two metal poles, this is how strong the wind was, these two metal poles started to crack down the bottom. And so I was really concerned at that stage, but I hadn't taken authority yet. But as soon as I stood in authority over these winds, that wind suddenly died down. Like, we, we let things overwhelm us. We let things dictate terms to us. We let things come upon us and we sit there and take it. But Jesus has given us authority and we need to take up our authority in Jesus Christ. And so Peter understood he had authority. Authority to speak to the weakness that was in those ankles and feet. Authority to speak to that disease or whatever it was that caused that lame man for 40 years to sit on a mat begging. He took his authority over that situation. The next thing that um, Peter had is that he understood that he was free from bondage. In John 8, 36, if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. You see, Peter understood this freedom that Jesus had given him, had endowed him, had filled him with. This freedom wasn't just for himself. It was a freedom to spread around. It was a freedom to give away. And so because Peter understood this freedom that he had experienced through Christ, he could come to someone's bondage. See, that illness was a bondage. That man had to rely on the goodness of other people. He had to beg. A beggar's lifestyle is a meager existence. Yet Peter understood, I've got freedom. Christ wants to give him freedom. Let me give that freedom away. He understood the freedom 